previous GE Beam's valve adjustment, and it sucks. So you guys who follow us on social probably already know, we had a customer Beam's engine where cylinder four exhaust failed and uh, leaked during the leak down test. We had the head sent out and the machine shop did their magic and we're now setting the valve adjustment. After they set the valve adjustment, why are we doing it twice? In my experience, a lot of times when the machine shop sets the valve adjustment on the bench, it's gonna change when you bolt the cylinder head to the block. And every single time I've experienced this, the valves get tighter. So yeah, sure enough, 15 out of 16 valves were tight. We gotta adjust. There's not a lot of resources online for the 3SGE beams despite how popular this engine is. So luckily, using this resource, service manual from JPNZ International. And basically this guy translates Japanese manuals into English and uh, they're great. I have all the Skyline manuals from this guy, and now the Alteza manual, because it was a nightmare Google translating the instructions for this thing. So let's see where we're at. You can see my two pieces of paper. I'm basically on my third round of valve adjustments on this thing. And so if you take a look at this, cylinders one, two, three, four, there's a one and a two for each valve. And then of course the intake and exhaust. Here's another fun thing. The beams takes a weird size valve shim. So these are shim under bucket. What does that mean? And so I got my bucket. And there's a shim under here. And so each corresponding shim has a size, right? So this is 305 millimeters in diameter. You can see right there, there's a nice recess for the, buck, for the shim to uh, sit in. All right, so why is this a headache? 13.8 millimeter shim. Not 13, not 14, 13.8. I couldn't find these anywhere. So after digging through the depths of Google, I found people were using precision shims of Australia. Yeah, contact Chris. Prompt response, communication was great. I rushed them in because COVID shipping has been a nightmare for Australian post. The baggies are well labeled. Yeah, precision shim of Australia if you want some beams valve shims. Okay, so another reason why this is a nightmare. If you've watched my 4AG valve adjustment video, you can actually leave the cams bolted up and because it's shim over bucket, there's a tool to compress the valve and then you can pull the bucket out. In this instance, there's not. I gotta take the cams out every single time. And so what makes it a headache if we look at all the hardware here, every single time there's a, th there's a three part torque sequence to all this hardware plus the cam gears gotta come on and off. We're gonna do a time lapse of just how much of a headache it is right now. passes 18.5 newton meters this is what these take put my cam gears back on because I need some way to turn the cams all right yeah these will only go on one way so you're not going to be able to uh, swap cams cam gears yeah eight millimeter allen for the cam bolts 
I'm going to uh, turn this to um, where the cams would be for TDC. So let me do that first, and then I'll show you guys. There's a few alignment marks. There's a line right there. This line's got to line up with this. Same thing. This line's got to line up with that. And then there's uh, there's two dots right there that got to line up with each other. So now we're ready to uh, do our first uh, valve lash measurement. So if you look in the service manual, it'll tell you either in this position, which cylinders and then which intake exhaust do you measure. Um, and then we're gonna turn it 180 the other way and I'll show you where the timing marks are. And then you'll have another set of cylinders to measure. So in this case, I can't show the manual because there's some copyright stuff. So in this case, it's gonna be cylinder one and two intake valves. Yeah, so 203, point 0.229, 0.254, and 0.279. Oh, and you notice 0.279 does not go in, so, so that's a good thing. Uh, valve lash, there's a automatic and a manual transmission difference, so um, be aware when you look in the service manual. But my intake, 0.17 to 0.27 for the intake. Um, I measured 0.254, which is uh, at the taller end of the spec, but that's fine. If I wanted, I could get a little closer to the middle of the spec. But yeah, the fact that my 0.27 did not fit, my 0.27 feeler gauge did not fit in here, um, that means, yeah, this is for sure the correct the correct feeler gauge. Yeah, again, this is like my third round of valve adjustments. So this guy I loosened up, so I put a smaller shim in there to increase the valve clearance. And it looks like my other two that I need to check are cylinder three, one, and then cylinder four, number two. So that means I gotta um, turn these 180 the other way to uh, be able to measure cylinder four. So another word of caution, the most accurate way to know where the lobe should be for valve adjustment is by the timing marks. Because if you look at this, if you notice number one, this is like at the, the side of the lobe. And this is actually at almost like the bottom of the lobe center. Um, this is, this lobe orientation is more what I'm used to for where the lobe should be in relation to the bucket to measure valve clearance. But if you look, yeah, this is kind of an oddball for me. But this is also the, cam load position that the service manual wants you to measure the valve lash. So uh, why is this important? Because I know, for example, on a Subaru FA engine, they want these at a certain position. So def so not at the uh, bottom of the load. There's another position that an FA Subaru engine wants them at. So if you try to, you know, if we take a look at these, if you tried to do a valve adjustment on a, for example, Subaru FA at this position, your valve lash measurement would actually be incorrect. So again, it's gonna be different for every engine. I know it's not like this on a 4A, so that's why it's important to do your research. Look very carefully at the service manual. All right, so we gotta turn the cams 180 so I can measure, um, do the other set of measurements. We got these uh, 180 the other way. This is the second position for the cams to measure the other set of cylinders. So we'll check, take a look at some of our timing marks. Um, again, make sure to reference the service manual, but our two dots that used to line up in the middle, now they line up with the edge of the timing cover. So we'll look right there. Take a look at the other one. <clears throat> Got our dot lined up here. And then our uh, main timing marks both face downwards. So that guy, then one more down here. All right. So now according to the service manual, I can check my valve lash on cylinders three and four on the intake. So, so 0 0.22 is about the middle of my spec for intake. So let's see. So good. I can feel that's like a hair tight, but that's good. Good. Wow, that's tight still, shit. 0.229, let's double check the tight ones. Here's a point two zero. Oh, yeah. 
So 0 0.20 barely goes in. I think I'm going to have to loosen that one up. Here's a 254. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. This is still within our spec, so we're okay. Two, five, four. I measured that okay last time. Okay, so my 254 does not go in there. Yeah, similar to the one we did last time. Um, this is probably a 0 0.22, so that means um, this one's within spec. Actually, 0.22 is right in the middle of our spec, so this one's actually perfect. So we're gonna leave this guy. So yeah, if we look at my uh, crude valve adjustment drawing, 290 was within spec, but it's a hair looser than I want, so I'm gonna put a 291 in there. And 297 was okay this time, and I'm going to have to recheck number four because that's still too tight. So I'm going to have to adjust cylinder number four for probably like the fourth time now. <clears throat> yeah, again, why is this a headache? Because now there's a uh, basically a three-part loosening procedure to get the cams back out, put a different shim in, and then again, uh, put everything back, and then three-part torque, do my cam years, so. But this is a critical measurement to make. Why, right? So valve's too tight, you can actually hold the valve open and have a misfire and actually damage the valve if the valve is constantly held open, even by a little bit. Too loose, and I've seen this before, now you have the cam lobe like slapping the bucket and you can actually get um, metal on metal damage from there being too much clearance and the cam slapping the bucket. Um, I'll try to bring up a picture, but I have a bucket shim that looks like an earthquake went through it because the valve clearance was set way too loose on that thing. And again, that shim was getting slapped every time. Um, all the hardening's worn off of these shims. So um, that's one thing, the valve clearance was way too much. So again, this is a 3SGE valve adjustment video. Um, yeah, valve adjustment's absolutely a critical measurement. Anytime the head comes off, anytime the valve cover comes off, you should probably check what the valve clearance is to you know, avoid serious engine damage, because yeah, um, valve adjustment's one of those, I feel like black arts that a lot of people really don't understand. And again, it's gonna differ by um, every single engine you work on. I mean, I'll just give you an example. If you have, for Ford AGs, you guys probably know there's shimless buckets, a bucket under shim. There's probably a company that makes bucket shims and uh, the way you adjust those is gonna be all different, so. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave a comment below. Remember to like and subscribe. Buy some merch on our merch store so I don't go broke. Yeah, appreciate all the support again and uh, catch you guys next time.